get ready. Arthur can be classified as a steel inverted powered coaster created by Mack Rides. Europa Park as a whole is operated by the Mack family, so it's no surprise that they would highlight this new ride design in their own park. But to simply describe Arthur the Ride in a restrictive list of varying coaster types is taking a bit of a reductionist approach. Arthur doesn't exactly conform to any specific ride type that you're likely to have experienced before, or at least not in Europe. It combines a wealth of ideas to create a unique theme park attraction, including dark ride, spinning coaster, family coaster, and it also even utilizes animatronics and special effects. Again, if you've seen previous entries in this series, you know we're a big fan of multi-sensory experiences. It's a combination of varying characteristics that make rides unique and therefore more enjoyable, at least in our opinion. So why is Arthur the Ride such a good ride? Well, we're going to find out in today's video. Get ready. Features. Arthur is a powered coaster, therefore it doesn't require the use of gravity to propel the trains along the track. Instead, the individual trains are powered by motors located inside the train itself. Considering this and the fact that it's more of a family themed ride, it only has a maximum height of 13 and a half meters and a top speed of 31 kilometers an hour. This ride therefore needs to be looked at through the lens of a family coaster. This isn't a thrill ride, so it's perfectly acceptable for it to not feature intense drops or spinning sections. Although with that said, there are a couple of points during this ride where there is actually some light intensity. This is particularly the case during the indoor section where you pick up some speed during a slight launch as you circle around the land's dining section. The largest outdoor section also gives a bit of speed, as well as some unique and unusual feeling lateral G's as you whip around some gentle bends. The contrast between these parts and the slower moving dark ride portions helps embellish the speed and fun factor of these faster parts of track, and the transitions between both feel effortlessly smooth as your hanging car glides along the track. It doesn't feel jerky and each part of the ride is extremely comfortable. With a track length of just 550 meters, the ride is physically quite short. But once you factor in that this is actually a powered coaster with a top speed of 31 kilometers an hour, this ride feels quite long. This is also the case considering the relatively slow storytelling parts of the ride. With a duration of about four minutes, this is a lengthy attraction and thoroughly justifies a longer wait time. One of the worst aspects of a theme park visit is long waits and this is made worse by waiting a long time for a ride that's pretty decent, but quite short. Thankfully, Arthur is not just a very good ride, but also is a nicely length attraction too. Throughout the ride, onboard audio plays an integral role in further immersing riders, ensuring that what you hear creates part of the world around you. And this is further bolstered using lighting and smoke effects, as well as the sparse use of screens to add extra flourishes to the overall sensory experience within the ride. Another interesting feature is its non-reliance on being a standard dark ride. Whereas dark rides are often contained within specifically lit scenes, Arthur the Ride actually features big open areas, including outdoor sections. But the meandering tracks around some of the open indoor areas offer some amazing interaction with the surrounding building, even witnessing some of the land's smaller features and the guests below the ride. Theming. Arthur the Ride is centrally themed around the Arthur and the Minnie Moyes book series, and more congruently, the following film franchise. The original film, Arthur and the Invisibles, came out in 2006 and didn't exactly make a huge splash outside of Europe. Although, with that said, the film and the franchise as a whole managed to attract quite a significant amount of A-list talent to lend their voices, such as Mia Farrow, Madonna and even David Bowie. The film revolves around the story of a fabled treasure hidden away in a land composed of tiny fairy-like creatures. Despite the film's lacklustre critical reviews, the film still managed to spawn two sequels over the following years. This, tied along with its DreamWorks-esque casting, made complete business sense for a European theme park to adapt the source material to a themed entertainment experience. Thankfully, however, the visual style and overall pleasant aesthetic lends itself well for a family-style dark ride. Guests are supposedly shrunk down to the size of these fairies, and this becomes the basis for everything that we experience on the ride. This allows for creative and visually impressive sets that incorporate detailed vistas, moving animatronics, and outlandish and colourful scenes. Everything about Arthur from a visual standpoint is impressive, and these all enhance the story-driven plot being told, 
as your car tactically slows down and speeds up to accentuate specific plot points. Fantasy themed family attractions are a tried and tested formula at this point, but not many create such an immersive world. In a sense, it feels quite like Drumflucht found in Efteling, but for the 21st century. In both instances, you enter a magical fairy-like kingdom full of mystical and pretty scenes. Although this is now being brought to you through modern and cutting edge vehicles that can spin as well as speed up and slow down, and giving an all round more coaster like experience for the whole family. Again, it's important to reiterate that this is actually a roller coaster of sorts, and it's very rare to see such detail placed into an attraction of this kind, instead of relying heavily on some acceleration and spinning to entertain its riders. This is an innovative roller coaster type that tells a story, and it should be no surprise that this is a huge added bonus for us which leads us onto our next section. The Ride Type Arthur the Ride doesn't rely on traditional roller coaster mechanisms. This is simply for the fact that Arthur is a powered coaster. This interesting design type is usually found on traditional family coasters, many of which will perform two laps. These typically maintain a steady pace around the circuit, not offering much variance in the overall experience. Arthur, on the other hand, is powered to specific speeds during portions of the track. It's for this reason that manufacturer Mack Rides have heavily advertised this coaster type for story based attractions. The ride allows for sudden stops and quick bursts of acceleration. Each of the ride's gondolas have its own rotation platform, which allows riders to align with the screens the ride wants to show you. Each car is equipped with a motor driven tyre that accelerates the train along the track. The features of the ride allow for a unique experience, particularly in contrast with other inverted coasters. Firstly, the ride doesn't have shoulder restraints. Instead, they use automatic lowering lap bars. This helps lock you into your seat, but it's actually quite comfortable. It also feels very freeing, and many coaster enthusiasts will agree that a lap bar is a much more preferable option over the usual over the shoulder restraints. The station also utilizes an Omnimover style platform, so the throughput is quite high, considering each train only holds 12 people. The ride can still board an estimated 1600 riders per hour. There's even onboard controls integrated into the seats, which plays a pivotal role during a climactic scene. Riders can press buttons in the restraint to help defeat the ride's villain. The added interactive element and button mashing makes for an interesting take and something you wouldn't expect on any type of roller coaster. Whether the buttons actually have any causative effects is questionable, but needless to say, it's a quirky addition you might anticipate on a standard dark ride. But to have it featured on a roller coaster, is pretty fun and definitely very enjoyable for younger riders. This is all present along with a booming onboard audio system that keeps you immersed in your surroundings. Arthur the Ride therefore makes up a part family roller coaster and part interactive dark ride. And again, what's interesting to note is the fact that it's an inverted coaster, but still maintains a relatively short height requirement. Riders only need to be four years old and one meter, or just over three foot in height. It's an accessible ride that can be enjoyed by a wide range of park goers and makes for a perfect family ride. All of these features led Arthur the Ride and more broadly the inverted powered coaster to win the 2017 Themed Entertainment Association Award for Outstanding Achievement in Innovative Ride System. It also won the European Star Award for Europe's Best Family Ride in the same year. With the addition of How to Train Your Dragon themed Dragon Gliders in Motion Gate Dubai in 2017, it's exciting to see how Mac plan to develop this coaster type further. We'll have to wait and see what's in store for the all new Jurassic Park themed inverted power coaster coming to Universal Studios Beijing later this year. But considering the budget Universal Parks can utilize, it's most likely going to be amazing and should really show the potential for this type of ride. Final Thoughts Arthur the Ride has been argued by some to be one of the most immersive roller coaster attractions in any theme park. It's certainly a creative marvel despite the original source material not being the most critically acclaimed, to say the least. It's not always the case that we get to see such elaborately themed family coasters that incorporate so many different elements, along with some gentle thrills for everyone to enjoy. All in all, the attraction costs 25 million euro to manufacture, which by comparison to many other theme park rides, seems like quite a steal. But it's also a testament to how well Europa Park and Mack Rides know how to effectively develop good theme park attractions. When you factor in the technologically savvy coaster trains, elaborate scenes and even animatronics, it's a surprise to see how such a ride was developed for such a price. 
It really lets you ponder what the future is for inverted powered coasters going forward, and what ridiculous creation is on the horizon for Universal Beijing's installment of this ride type, with presumably a much bigger budget and some world-renowned intellectual property in Jurassic Park. Only time will tell, but it's fair to say that inverted power coasters have the ability to usher in a new era of creativity in theme park attraction design. And this will hopefully bring about more and more story-centric coasters, and in turn, Arthur the Ride will be just one of many good rides. We hope you enjoyed this installment in our What Makes This Ride So Good series. Now you're ready. What attraction should we do next? Leave a comment with your suggestion and hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with the channel.